This is the BGG climbers list for the week ending uh, 1-6-2021. 2021. This is the first list of 2021 and probably the first one where we're going to see games that people probably receive for Christmas or the holidays. So let's take a look at it. First, I'm going to note that Pandemic Legacy Season 2 seems to be starting its decline. Its average rating has been dropping a little bit. It's probably peaked, uh, pro I think, at 33 was its peak, but it might have been a little bit higher. Probably being, I estimate this is going to be the worst of the Pandemic Legacies, meaning Season 0 and Season 1 are going to be the highest rated at the end of this. Um, also, Eclipse is starting its decline after 2nd Edition came out and is widely regarded as a improved version of Eclipse. And Scythe, I think, is on its way down. So it used to be 11 on 10.21. It's already dropped to 14. There's finally some new games entering the top 10, and I think there's going to be a few more, and that's probably going to push these older games down. And Scythe is an older game now, being, I think, four years or five years old this year. Wow. Getting old. So let's get into the climbers. So most of these are ones we've seen before. I do want to note in the below 10, Kanban EV, people must be getting their copies of it. It's starting to climb. I mean, it's basically just Kanban again. So I think people have bought this like Kanban already. It's going to do well on the ratings. Um, Kanban was always, already a well-regarded game. Under Falling Skies is continuing its descent. Again, we're still only at 605 ratings. and But it is looking like it has potential to enter the top 100 if enough people rate this game and continues at this rate. So we'll see. This might be a top 100 solo game, probably due, in, due to, in part, the pandemic this year. And let's get to number 10, Bees. So there's a couple B games this year, and Bs is one of them. I don't think we've looked at this on the list. Let's take a look at the ratings here. So we have, looks like a lot of people are getting copies of it. It's not doing incredibly well, so this is probably going to drop off the list here in a week or two. But let's take a look at the game anyway. It's a pretty lightweight game. Dan Halstead. I don't know what games he's done. I guess this is his first. At least on BGG. I think it looks good. I think I remember seeing this game. I don't know if was it a Kickstarter? Might have been. Uh, maybe not. So a published game. I think it looks decent. Got little bee things, and you put petals and flowers. I assume you're gonna play the bees, and you're gonna these minis kind of look pretty cool. I wonder what they mean. It looks like you're flying the bee around collecting honey and stuff, which is kind of a unique theme. It looks pretty good. It is lightweight, which means it's not going to do, uh, it's not going to have a lot of staying power typically on the BGG lists. And it's pretty low playtime. Modular board pattern building, complete to, yeah, optimize their flight plans to get nectar into their hive. So, I mean, a unique game. I don't think we'll be seeing this too much in the coming weeks, though. That's number 10, Bees. Number 9, Century Golem Edition, in Endless World. So they weren't going to release the Century games as Golem Editions, but I think they were convinced by the amount of people that just love the look of the Golem Edition. I am one of those people. I think the Century Golem Edition, they should have just never even made the Spice Road. It looks that much better. And let's take a look at this one. So this one is, actually, let's find, I forget which one this one re-implements. This re-implements Century A New World, and it is one that I've played. So this is kind of like a modified worker placement game, if I remember right. And it was, it was good. I didn't like it as much as the Century Golem Edition, the original one, um, the card draft, or the card, I guess, hand-building game. And this is the complete set. I'm probably going to end up having to get this game just because I do kind of want to play 
all of them together and see what type of game it is. I have heard the combination of all of them is really good. I guess this is maybe both of them set up. Yeah, this is, I think, everything set up together. So this looks good. I mean, it looks like an expansion on the original with the same great golem art, the same, like, awesome gems. I think, I just don't see why you'd buy the other version of this game. I mean, the golems look awesome. So I think we'll continue to see this on the list. I don't think it's going to rank as high as the other golem edition, but you know, maybe maybe it will because people that already like this are going to pick it up, and sometimes that helps the games move up. So that's number nine, Century Golem Edition, Endless World, Waste Night Second Edition. This must be a Kickstarter. I must not must not been aware of this one. So let's see what this game is. So it's a heavyweight game, one to four players. It I assume it implements Waste Night. And it, of course, is a Kickstarter game. Vocalop, the game. Interesting. Okay. This must have a decent following. Kind of a post-apocalyptic adventure game. <laughs> wonder, wonder which convention this was with this war of mine. Spiel 2018. This was a long time coming. They were pushing the Waste Nights, I guess, during probably when they were running their Kickstarter, they were showing this off. It looks good. I'm going to assume that uh, people that like this game already like Waste Nights. Let's see how this thing did. Uh, I mean, it, it did okay. It never moved up too high as an average rating hopefully it's an improved version i'm gonna guess that we're not going to see much of it i think as far as adventure games go i don't know uh there's like the lord of the rings uh adventures in middle earth and i think zia is a adventure game with especially with missions and powers so I think competing against those is really tough. Oh, yeah, and the open world game, uh, Western Legends. I mean, it would be great to have a post-apocalyptic one that's good. I'll be interested to see this in the future weeks, although given the first edition being kind of a marginal game, unless this drastically improved it, it's probably not. It's probably getting its best ratings at the start, which are still, you know, low eights. So that's number eight, Waste Knight, second edition. Number seven is Dwellings of Eldervale. So... This one is a game I regret not picking up. There was a local store that had it, and I could have bought the Legendary Edition. I guess I'll be waiting till the next Kickstarter, which I assume is going to happen. Pick it up. It's just getting too solid a ratings over, I guess, over since it came out. I, it's a worker placement game. I like worker placement games. I think... Everyone said the component quality is amazing and the gameplay is really good and strong. So I think I'll both keep seeing this climb up the charts. And I think there's enough copies out there that we might even see it hit the top 100 by you know mid this year, assuming they don't run out of copies. So that's Dwellings of Eldervale, number seven. Number six, Aliens, Another Glorious Day in the Course. So this one. People are clearly getting their copies. The ratings are a little bit low. I think this one is not likely to hit the top 100. It we'll have to see how it does in the coming weeks if it'll even hit like the top 250. But I think that Nemesis is just probably a better Aliens game, and maybe Project Elite is a better like tactical fighting game and i think this is on the tactical fighting game side so that's number six aliens another glorious day in the core number five is Mer, part of the silk road so we've seen this for a few weeks it's continuing to a decently strong performance although it's trailing off so i mean it's hard to say today but we'll have to keep an eye on this and see how it's climbing this is the 
game that has the you know two artwork that looks good but doesn't look as you know toolish if i would i would say like as typical maybe he's going with more of the arabian theme or the silk road stuff i i don't know but i think it looks really good i think you know tool maybe someday i'll do a top 10 artist but he probably is my favorite for board games and we'll have to see this one i'm getting the feeling though that it's probably losing some steam but uh we'll know in about a few more weeks so that's merv heart of the silk road number five number four cloud age so this is as someone said "Ooh, is this hitting people's homes it must be because the ratings are coming out quick so maybe gifts for christmas maybe shipments have finally made it to their distributors I, i'm not sure but it's definitely not looking as solid as his previous games. Maybe it's the people not liking the mechanisms as much. Maybe it's because it's not as heavy. It's a 2.75. I think like GWT or Maracaibo are in the like mid threes at least for weight. I do think it looks really good. I really like the airships. I'm not sure how the game plays, but I do like the look of it. I, I'm interested to see some reviews, though. I don't think I've seen any like big reviews on this. And it'll be interesting to see their take. Now, if it gets some strong reviews, maybe that'll push more people to get it, which might turn its ratings around. I mean, it is, is an Alexander Fister game, which means people are going to at least look at it. I think that's uh, one good thing about being such a big name designer i like the i like the dual layer boards hint hint for a reprint of maracaibo or an expansion do something like this not the stacked uh for rico tiles or uh, circles so there's cloud age i was kind of hoping for a maybe a faster climb but we'll see i'm holding out hope for this one number four number three pandemic legacy season zero so this one is pretty much continuing its preordained ascent up the list now we saw pandemic legacy season two is already falling off and it's averaging low eights at this point this one is averaging almost a nine which if it continues at this rate it has the potential to hit the top 10 i think it's already at uh 739 i think within probably two months maybe three if people are able to play the game we're going to see it hit the top 100 and i think it's fairly likely it's going to be in the top 20 i can't say top 10 yet but i think it's going to be in the top 20 for sure so that is number three pandemic legacy season zero Number two, Lost Runes are next. We've talked about this one a few times. This is the latest deck building worker placement game from published by CG from uh, Elwyn and Min, which I forget what they. I think they've done some other some other designs. And I played this game. I think it's good. I would you know for my feeling, I don't think it's great. I don't think that it plays as quickly as I'd like for a deck building game. I don't think. Its worker placement mechanisms are maybe as interesting. I think it, I do like that the spots evolve over the game, but I just think it's kind of a slow moving game. It, I think it's limited to five rounds. In your fifth round, you feel like you're doing a lot of stuff, but your earlier rounds is kind of slow and, and the pace just isn't there for me, at least. But it does look amazing. We look at the board, they did an amazing job in the artwork. The cards look really good. The tokens look really good. Let's see if we have a, a picture of them. These tablets look really good. Uh, these are punch boards coming off the press. These gems look really good. The, the custom meeples look great. The tokens look good. So clearly CG play tested this game and said, you know, we have a game that it's worth investing in the production quality. And they put it out. Now, like I said, the game itself I think is a good game. I just don't think it's great. And I think it's probably 
unique, but as you can see from the ratings, it's in the low eights already. I do think it's going to hit the top 200, most likely. Maybe top 100. We'll have to see how the ratings continue. So that is Lost Ruins of Arnak, number two. And number one is Dune Imperium, which I think is the second week at number one. This, again, is a deck-building worker placement game. But, as you can see, it's getting much better ratings than Lost Ruins of Arnak. Now, I haven't played this one, so I can't comment on the gameplay. I can only speculate that maybe it's partially due to the fact that it's Dune. Or, as some of the reviews I've seen say, it's just a really good game. I'm interested to try it out. I think I do get a little bit worried about two-hour playtime. Now, this what is published by Direwolf, and they're the ones that did Plank. So they do have some experience in this blending of deck-building games with other mechanisms. And maybe that's where, where this came out to be a, a stronger game. I do think Lost Runes Arnak looks better. Now, this does look kind of spacey. But it also looks kind of, I would say, Wiz, WizKids-ish in terms of quality or like older WizKids-ish. Now the artwork doesn't look amazing to me. The pieces, I guess the custom wooden pieces look okay. They look good. But they maybe could have done more unique plastic pieces or, or made something look a little bit better from that. I do think that I think this was originally planned to come out with the Dune movie, but the Dune movie I think got delayed till later this year. But that may help it because it'll probably be in stores and people will be able to buy it when the when the movie is out. Control the spice, control the universe, standard Dune stuff. I wonder if these come with the game. They they look custom. Yeah, custom. So and a little alien and some drink. So. I think we'll continue seeing this. I can't make a prediction yet, but I think it is. I, don't know. I would say it's likely to hit the top 100, at least briefly. We'll have to see how it continues uh, in the coming weeks. The initial ratings was a little were a little bit low, but it's really come on strong as people have received their copies. So there you have it. That is the number one game for the week, ending January 6, 2021. If you like this video, please like and please subscribe. Please take a look at our other videos and also take a look in the links in the description where I'll have it to Michael Alexander's list and the geek list you can subscribe to and, and read it yourself. Thank you.